the presidential run that almost weighs a quarter ton. Five, six foot two, over 330 pounds. This is the 27th president of the United States of America, William Howard Taft. Here is what a few people of his time had to say about him. He was fat, but he had the frame that carries weight with an effective majesty, of the sort that primitive men, and even modern men in the average, like to see in their kings and leaders. All men, we are told, look like some animal. Mr. Taft looks like two animals. Look straight into his face, and he looks like a chicken, a rooster, not a game rooster with fire in his eye and comb cut short, but a good, honest Dominic, conscientious, prompt to squawk when he sees a hawk, even if unable to fight a hawk. Look at him sideways, and he looks like an American bison, a gentle, kind one, minus the thick hair in front. Taft is the politest man in Washington. The other day he gave up his seat in a streetcar to three ladies. Like many of his ancestors before him, William's father, Alfonso Taft, became a lawyer. He served under President Ulysses S. Grant as both Secretary of War and Attorney General, as well as was an ambassador under President Chester A. Arthur. William Howard Taft was born on September 15, 1857, in Cincinnati, Ohio. He graduated second in his class at Yale before moving on to law school. Following this, he became Assistant Prosecutor of Hamlin County until 1882, when he was appointed Local Collector of Internal Revenue. Not long after, in 1886, he was able to woo his childhood sweetheart, Helen Heron, whom he nicknamed Nellie. Taft would often joke that if he ever made it to Washington, it would be due to his wife's success as opposed to his. However, his real aspiration, ever since he was a child, was to become a member of the Supreme Court, a dream which he would make a reality. Taft served as Governor General of the Philippines during William McKinley's presidency. He effectively aided the country's economy and infrastructure, giving merit to his influence as a political power. Theodore Roosevelt made Taft his Secretary of War and two years later made a deal with Nellie in order to convince Taft to run for president. Taft came out victorious in the 1908 election, beating Williams Jennings Bryan's 162 electoral votes with an astounding 321 electoral votes. He was a record-setting president in more than just his waist size. He is the only president to ever serve in all three branches of government, the first to have a presidential automobile, the first to occupy the Oval Office, the first to throw the ceremonial first pitch at a baseball game, and the first to play golf as a hobby. He was also the last president to have facial hair, and according to some accounts, he was the only president to ever get trapped in a bathtub. Reports discuss the installment of a new bathtub to accommodate President Taft in the White House. This new bathtub was so large that it could very well accommodate four regular-sized presidents, after it took not five, but six assistants to free him. It would later be known in American history, mostly by the producers of this documentary, as T-Day. In a not-so-recent interview, Taft revealed just how scarring this day was. First, Mr. Taft, I'd like to thank you for doing this interview with me. Now, Mr. Taft, how did that day make you feel? Well, it was a bit of a wake-up call for me. I realized that my size caused more trouble than the taste of food is worth. So I changed my diet and actually lost about 80 pounds. I, also, I figured that in my state I couldn't effectively trust bust like Roosevelt had. Taft was a very dedicated trust buster and would earn himself quite a reputation in being one. The Taft administration offered us this dramatized video in order to provide a demonstration. <laughs> Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great, or my name isn't John D. Rockefeller. Didn't you hear the ruling in the Standard Oil Company versus United States case? Sorry, Rocky, but your trust has been standard foiled. You're guilty of monopolizing the petroleum industry. You're going down. Not without a fight, I don't. Why, I oughta. Ugh! Oh, President Taft. Thanks, Miss Tarbell. I couldn't have done it without your riveting expose. Just kidding, I totally could have. So that's exactly how it happened? A bit dramatized, but either way, yes, I did break apart Standard Oil. And I'll have you know I beat the old bull Deuce Roosevelt in trust busting as far as numbers go. Were there any other monopolies you were willing to destroy? Actually, yes. In fact, in the famous 1911 Supreme Court case, United States vs. American Tobacco Company, I helped to break that trust up. Taft began his presidential turn determined to promote domestic success by breaking up trusts. Totaling 99 prosecutions in his term, he broke up even more trusts than the great trustbuster himself, Theodore Roosevelt. 
Another notable achievement of Taft was the passing of the 16th Amendment under his term. This allowed for the national levying of an income tax. Taft, while greatly similar to Roosevelt in his progressive ideals, also varied greatly in the way that he tried to make decisions. While Roosevelt largely ignored tariffs in order to avoid controversy, Taft pushed for lower tariffs while still trying to negotiate with conservatives. He would later describe this approach as policy harmony. Taft tried largely to stand up for the underdog of a nation, and unlike many presidents at the time, he attempted to push for African-American civil rights. He did this by endorsing Booker T. Washington and his ideas to abandon full civil equality at the time and instead fight for education and the acquisition of skills for the African-American group. Taft also fought for equality and his support for free immigration, going as far to even veto a law passed by Congress and supported by labor unions that would have restricted unskilled laborers by imposing a literary test upon them. On a further foreign note, Taft supported dollar diplomacy, or the lending of U.S. dollars to foreign nations to help U.S. relations as well as the international economic development. He also supported foreign investment, personally engaging in talks with the Chinese to provide American assistance in the expansion of the Chinese railroad industry. All aboard! This was accomplished in the multinational Hu Kuanglu. Taft's peaceful attitude gained opposition, however, when a Mexican uprising was sparked due to riots against an authoritative regime. When things started to get out of hand, however, Taft's peaceful attitude foregoing military intervention became largely controversial as it led to the deaths of two American citizens in riots. Thus, the differences between Taft's and Roosevelt's foreign policies began to grow more and more each day. This eventually led to both the destruction of a party and a friendship. I've heard discussion of poor relations between you and Roosevelt. Do these still stand? Yes, it's true we had our difficulties in the past, but we've been working in recent years to solve these. It's hard, though. In what will be known as the pinchot Ballinger controversy, Griffith Pinchot, who was the chief of the United States Forest Service and a friend of President Roosevelt, called on President Taft to discharge his Secretary of Interior, Richard Ballinger, who was alleged to have collaborated with coal interests to plunder federal reserves in Alaska. Taft, being forced to choose between the two, ultimately chose Ballinger, thus firing Pinchot. This enraged Roosevelt and is largely recognized as the cause of the split in the Republican Party. What were your thoughts when he decided to run against you? This tears my soul. I'm here to answer to an old and true friend who has made many charges against me. I deny these charges. I do not wish to fight Theodore Roosevelt, but I will fight him. He was my closest friend. And he responded, It is a bad trait to bite the hand that feeds you. Unfortunately for his presidential standing, Taft had made too many political enemies during his presidency for re-election. The 1912 presidential race was a four-way contest, including Woodrow Wilson, who won with a substantial 435 electoral votes, Theodore Roosevelt, who took 88 electoral votes, Taft, who won only 8 electoral votes, and Eugene V. Debs, who did not gain a single electoral vote. According to F.C. Hicks' report entitled William Howard Taft, Yale Professor of Law and New Haven Citizen, after Taft lost the election of 1912, Yale University sent a man to the White House to suggest that Taft accept a chair of law at the university. With his sense of humor, Taft replied that a chair would not be adequate, but that if the university would provide a sofa of law, that it might be alright. In 1921, eight years after having left the White House, Taft was offered a Supreme Court position by President Warren G. Harding. Finally achieving his lifelong dream, Taft accepted without hesitation. In the court, Taft advocated for the passage of the 1925 Judiciary Act, which limited the court's workload by making cases apply to be reviewed by the court. Taft also assisted in the creation of the Supreme Court building, as the court had previously been held in the Capitol building. Important decisions made by Taft include his opposition towards Adkin v. Children's Hospital, in which he opposed the decision to not consider long work hours as a health hazard, as well as his support in Olmsted v. United States, which mandated that illegally acquired evidence could not be used in a case. He served in the court for the next nine years, retiring in February of 1930 due to ill health. He passed away in March that year and became the first president and first chief justice to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. One of Taft's sons and later a grandson became senators, as well another son became the mayor of Cincinnati, and one of his great-grandsons became the governor of Ohio. William Howard Taft truly was a symbol of our nation, and while times continue to change, he reminds us that we must adapt to them. And although we may not always do the best in others' eyes, we must do the best for ourselves. William Howard Taft truly reflects this. As William Howard Taft was a president of many firsts and lasts of our nation, William Howard Taft's legacy 
lives on with us. And although Taft may have hated politics, being quoted as saying, politics make me sick on various occasions, it was clear that Taft truly did love our nation. And for that, we respect him. Thank you, Taft. President Taft, you're a big man, you're a big man.